make some banana bread. Believe it or not, the main ingredient in this recipe is bananas. So in this case, we're using three of them. You'll wanna use overripe bananas, which will have some really nice sweetness to them. So bananas like these that have lots of brown patches, but still a good amount of yellow are perfect. You don't want them to be completely brown. Now this recipe will come together pretty quickly, so start by preheating your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 175 degrees Celsius. Then in a small bowl, mash up your three bananas until they start to become smooth and shiny. I'm just mashing with a fork here, but if you have a potato masher, that would work even better. There should still be some chunks left when you're done, so you're really just looking for them to be relatively well mashed and liquidy. Once you're at that point, add one cup or 192 grams of brown sugar, and I like to use dark brown sugar for that really deep molassesy flavor. This brown sugar is gonna give the bread a much deeper and more complex flavor compared to using granulated sugar, and it'll really complement the sweetness of the bananas nicely. Now we'll need to add two egg yolks, so get out another bowl that you can place the whites into in the meantime. I like to put the whites straight into the bowl of a stand mixer because we're gonna end up whipping them soon. So just separate your eggs, placing the yolks into the bowl with the banana mixture and the whites into your clean bowl. Now if you're using a stand mixer, go ahead and start whipping the egg whites, starting on a low speed as you add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. This way we can just let them whip as we prepare the rest of the ingredients. But if you don't have a stand mixer, you can definitely do this using an electric hand mixer or just whisking by hand. We'll need to whip the egg whites to firm peaks, so starting on a low speed helps some bubbles start to slowly develop at first, leading to a more stable structure once the egg whites are fully whipped. In the meantime, just stir your banana mixture until it's thoroughly mixed and set that bowl aside for the time being. Now get out one more large bowl to which we'll add the dry ingredients. So go ahead and add two cups or 240 grams of all-purpose flour, along with one half teaspoon of kosher salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of baking powder, and stir until everything is evenly distributed. Now add one half cup or 113 grams of softened unsalted butter, cut up into small cubes like so to help it incorporate. The last thing we're gonna add is one quarter cup or 75 grams of buttermilk, but we're gonna wait to do that until the last minute. Once we add the liquid to the flour, gluten will start to develop, and for this particular recipe, we want more of a cake-like, tender texture, so we don't want a lot of gluten development. So before we add the buttermilk, I'll just check on the egg whites, and it looks like some bubbles are starting to develop, so we can go ahead and turn the mixture up to a medium speed. Now as those continue to mix, I'll add the 75 grams of buttermilk to the bowl with the dry ingredients, and stir with my dough whisk. Then just add the banana mixture to that same bowl a little bit at a time and continue to stir until everything is fully mixed. But be careful not to overmix because again, we don't want to develop too much gluten and end up with a chewy loaf. The buttermilk will provide the acid that the baking soda needs to create some leavening. If you've ever mixed baking soda and vinegar, you know that it creates a bubbly reaction and that's basically what's happening when you mix any sort of acid with baking soda. And since the buttermilk is acidic, it'll create little bubbles that'll help to leaven the bread. Now, once the egg whites are whipped to soft peaks, meaning that the peaks flop over like so when turned upside down, just add 48 grams or one quarter cup of granulated sugar. Then continue to mix until the egg whites reach stiff peaks, meaning that the peaks stand straight up when turned upside down. Once they're at that point, it's time to fold them into the rest of the batter. So the easiest way to do this is to start by taking about a quarter of your egg whites and just stirring them into the batter to lighten it up a bit. Then take about half of the remaining egg whites and fold them in with a rubber spatula by scraping along the edges of the bowl and cutting them through the center like so. Make sure they're all evenly distributed and that you're not left with any large patches of egg whites. Then just repeat that process with the rest of them. If you want, you can also fold in a half a cup of walnuts at this point. So I'm just crushing them up first with a meat pounder, then folding them in in the same way as I did with the egg whites. And after that, we're ready to bake. So get out a 9x5 baking pan and spray it with cooking spray. Then I also like to line it with parchment paper, which will make it super easy to remove the loaf from the pan once it's baked. Then just pour your batter into the pan and smooth out the top with your rubber spatula. And I also like to top the loaf with a tiny bit of kosher salt for some extra flavor. Then just toss the pan into your oven and allow it to bake for about 55 to 60 minutes until the top is nicely browned and a toothpick inserted into the center of the loaf comes out clean. Or in this case, until the thermometer comes out clean because I didn't have any toothpicks. But anyways, this bread turns out super moist and tender, so it's great when it's still warm from the oven. 